everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today, thanks to you and your input, we are going to be painting this gorgeous, adorable birdhouse with lavender and a simple wood fence. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. So he's going to be tracking me with cameras. If this is your first time here, he's going to be tracking me with cameras and making sure you see every step of the painting process so you can paint this for yourself at home. Yep. Because that is the goal. If you check the description below, information about the materials is there, links, notes, all that stuff, just to make your painting process easier. To everybody who was on Facebook, who participated in the votes and also in the design process, that was so much fun for me. So I think we're probably going to do that again. I hope everyone is okay. And I'm ready to kind of just jump on in. You ready to jump on in, John? Oh, yeah. All right. So our materials today starts with an 11 by 14 canvas and on this canvas i have some wishes we always like to put wishes on our canvas wishes intentions prayers whatever is perfect for you and today's our uh emily i read earlier in the chat is at duke hospital so i'm just wishing everything is okay there um definitely want everyone to stay safe from frostbite save pregnancies kathy's dad needs some healing um we're wishing that danny has a baby jobs and better jobs for those that are currently looking for them safety and all this cold for just everyone and also support uh for deputy Parrish's family who has gone through a, an incredibly tragic loss so we just put those out there you can add those to your canvas you can add your own they can be serious they can be silly it's your painting and I want to thank all the light cap keepers that capture all those wishes. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for putting all those, all, all those out there, guys. We really appreciate it. We really do. Are you ready to see what we're going to start with? Absolutely. All right. So over here, I have put out my uh, Mars Black and Titanium White. If you want to see the total paint palette, definitely check the description below if you need to know that at the beginning. I also have here a basic cheap kitchen sponge. It's just a cellulose sponge. And I've dipped it in water and squeezed out all the excess so it's damp but not wet mm -hmm. and i'm going to load the sponge i've started like this i'm going to pull some white paint out like this i go boom 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 i come from the outside edge and you can see i get it across here and then i'm going to come in a couple spots and add a little black and that's going to give me the streaking that i'm going to look for to create this weathered wood effect now for me it's easier for me to go back and forth horizontally so I like to reorient my canvas this way just so I have an easier time. And my first layer is just getting this on. I can go backwards or forwards and I want streaking. If your sponge is dry and not easily covering the canvas, you can mist it with a mister bottle. Mine's a power mister bottle, <laughs> but you can use the regular squeeze pump action kind. So that's how you get that nice coverage. I'm just pulling this back and forth. Uh, the slight hint of pink is from the watercolor pencil I wrote the wishes on with, and that's not going to hurt my piece at all. But you might not like that, so always good to think about what you put your wishes on your canvas with, mm -hmm. because that might go blending into your paint. I'm going to reload because I can see it's getting a little low. I'm just pulling that out. Tap, 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 tap with a little of this black and back again. If you're painting with little brushes, and I know some of you are, um, what they have the most trouble with is pressure. So that's something you just realize that you've got to press firmly, but not overly firm. And you're just trying to cover the canvas with paint, streaky, streaky paint. Does not have to be perfect. And you'll notice that I'm going, whoa, push too hard, horizontal with my brush stroke. And that's helping me create this wood texture effect. This works incredibly well on walls, by the way. Yeah. So once you have that entirely covered, you're going to do the top grain effect. And now I'm not going to re-moisten my sponge because I want this to be a little bit more of a dry sponging. See, I'm getting better. I'm not calling it dry brushing anymore because it's a dry sponging. So here we have here, I'm just loading this up, just taps of this sort of mix loosely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this across my canvas super lightly. See how light that is? Oh, I'm yeah. not pressing down. The sponge is touching the canvas, but it's just leaving little pops and streaks of paint. 
and that's going to create my weathered wood. It's so easy and fun and works in all kinds of color combos. So when I'm running out of paint and I'm out of it on my palette, I might need to put some more out. Just getting that out there, having that fun. I know you guys are chatting furiously in chat today. <laughs> yes. They are a chatty, chatty group. Chatty, chatty group. So I'm loading up. And we'll just do this over the rest of the canvas. Do we have any questions or well, anything? I was going to say that everyone's really happy to be back here with a live with us. And this has just been such a treat because everyone's back here and they're just chatting away here. I've looked over, we got over 450 people are hanging out with us, just chatting away. I mean, like they love the birdhouses and they've, and there's been, been some mild controversy around the lavender versus uh, blue bonnets approach of flower preference. Well, for you blue bonnet lovers, because this is live and because I like to give you guys everything you want, I'm going to show you how to take these from lavender to blue bonnet on one of the flowers. Oh, oh yeah. So you guys can have the type of spike flowers and everybody, that you might want, or I guess they're lupines really. Now everybody's unanimously just said they loved how you've approached this weathering effect and makes <gasps> it really easy to do. So It's so, and it goes, it just, you can just refinish old furniture. <laughs> <laughs> really seriously, this has a lot of potential. <laughs> hmm, that old dresser, it could look a lot cooler. It could. I'm telling you, I'm for those things. I like the unicorn spit and the refinishings and the chalk paints. I'm for it. All right. So there we go. That's looking pretty good. Take that till it feels like it's been living at the beach or somewhere coastal where salt and weather and wind has hit it a ton of times. And be sure and rinse out your sponge. I'm going to grab a sippy sippy of my coffee before... And everybody's saying, yay, the graveyard girl. Oh, yeah. Sippy, sippy of the coffee before <laughs> I go on to the next bit. No, I was noticing, you know, we want that idealistic beach look, right? You know, where that nicely even toned weather. Because anything that's actually lived at the beach, actually, it, 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 ha it, it, it has a much harder time. I don't know. It depends. Yeah. It really depends on the wood and where it's located. That's it's, true. I guess this is pretty good beach cottage side of the barn. Yeah. And you can do this with brushes. You can do the same effect with brushes. It's really the technique, not so much the tool sometimes. Yeah. Now, everybody's really loving that you can just pick these up at anywhere, like at the grocery store, at your convenience store. These are like an any person. The dollar store. Like all around the world. This is pretty much the same. And this will work with bottle paint, too. You can do this entire painting with bottle paint if that's what you have. Yeah. And you can change up the colors because there's not a lot of mixing now, I guess on this I painting. That, that, that by, by it's, I guess that kind of makes this a one hoot painting. Oh, our... there's not mixing. There's not, there's, you draw a box, but that's going to be real easy. Yeah. Everything about this is just going to be chill. I'm going to dry this a little bit so that I can lay my, uh, hey babe. I'm going to dry this a little bit so that I can lay my uh, ruler down on it. Okay. So, I'll make sure I got that. So while she's doing that, uh, I would say that. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Um, we've got uh, links in the descriptions for this and for uh, this and all the other stuff that's going on, like the, the, the materials list. Um, that You should be able to find that down there, uh, along with links to our, uh, to our website. Uh, and we'll have that up there. Now, there was, uh, I saw a couple of really interesting questions that come up here that I'm going to make sure I get back to. But, yeah, these are your same grocery store sponges that you should be able to get just about anywhere um, around the world. And, oh, yeah, that's what it was. Um, a, 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 on a scale of one to three, you know, we call, you know, we, we would say this is a one hoot or uh, painting. So, you know, it should be easy for anyone to do. You don't have to worry about it if you've not done anything any before. A lot of these techniques that you're seeing should be easy, easy for you to do uh, and have no problem picking up. I was just explaining the difference, you know, uh, what a one hoot painting was. Oh, I appreciate that. He's actually really good at that. He, he came up with a much better definition than I used to have, I, I which did? was just sort of the general like, well, I mean, it's a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's two hoots, three hoots, you're going to be kind of panting. <laughs> but everything on this channel is more focused to the beginning acrylic painting process. Yeah. Though lately we've been taking on bigger, bigger, bigger challenges. <laughs> okay. So now I have here is an inexpensive T-square. If you don't have this, there's a way to do this with a regular ruler. You just want something that lets you have a straight edge. 
I'm going to measure my canvas. This is all, you know, 11 inches across. I'm terrible at math and things, but it's basically 3.6 inches. So I just come a little bit over and then here I go one, two, three, point six inches and I make another mark. Now, if you're using a regular ruler, you're gonna wanna do that same measurement process, but you're just gonna wanna make sure that you do it on the opposite side so your line is level. Hmm. That's all you have to do to do it with a regular ruler. And you can eyeball this in. Now, uh, Jennifer asked a really good question. Hmm. What I'm gonna do grab you do... a round brush. So this uh, technique that you're showing, mm -hmm. we're using the sponge, can leave a really heavily textured uh, canvas behind. Um, it's textured. It doesn't feel heavily textured to me, but that may be just that I consider heavily textured to be like impasto. Sure. With deep raises and grooves, but it will have a bit of a texture, yeah. So Jennifer was concerned that uh, like when she when she when that's there, how can she make it so that that texture doesn't show through like the other parts of her painting, like necessarily the uh, birdhouse? Or, well, or... you know, to be real frank, and you can see this happen, like on the example painting, the texture just doesn't come through. I just didn't have. You shouldn't be pulling so much texture if it is pulling through. If like you have a lot of texture, you can. Um, re-smooth you can sketch in your birdhouse and uh, smooth that in with like uh, acrylic modeling paste or some type of surface treatment you can sand it but be sure if ever you sand in acrylic painting you are wearing a dust mask oh yeah proper respiratory yeah protection. acrylic paint does not belong in your lungs no but so yeah, you could use like a you know like a gesso or some uh, acrylic filler. Yeah, to gesso. Just smooth it up. Gesso doesn't really have that much body to it. It's just marble dust and ah. um, a chalk. I mean, a chalk. It's marble dust in a polymer with pigment. But uh, well, good gesso. And uh, so it's got a bit of a grit to it. You'll want something a little more of a paste. You know, if it's a real problem. If but it, yeah. what I would suggest is is that if you're Putting this on in nice layers, you shouldn't get too much thickness. I'm kind of oh. curious why it's so thick. So I just I, read I guess that's my curiosity. It, this may this might not be a birdhouse as much it could be a fairy home. Oh yes, you totally make this a fairy home. I'm going to show you the basic construction of how you get this little little birdhouse in, and then the infinite combos of you guys customizing this for your needs. Have a blast! I love it. I love it. All right. So we're letting this dry. Okay. Um, and it, oh, it was it Jennifer that asked about the texture? Yes. So uh, if you go by the Facebook group and uh, post it, post that question there and get good pictures of the texture that you're seeing. And that will help me answer that a little bit. Because sometimes it's hard to know what you guys have at home. So I'm like kind of generally like, what can I imagine is happening? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out a little of my blue. Really simple palettes, almost a primary palette, except we have uh, green and uh, purple today. This is Thalo Blue. And I picked Thalo because I just really love the color. Not more black. I don't need more black yet. More white, though. Definitely needs more white. And I'm going to put this close because I'm going to do a little mixture of these two together to get that nice base color. I'm going to put out a little extra white for mixing any other colors that I have, just in case I need it. And I've got cad red medium. But any red that you like, you could really mix up these colors. I mean, that customizing comment, I um, mean it. Mean it, mean it, mean it. And I'll show you guys uh, several types of flowers that you can do down there in the stock technique. They'll be the same technique, but different color combos. You guys will be like, oh. Because I could also probably do some fire stocks too if anybody wants them. But for sure, blue bonnets and, li and lilacs. Lavender. Lilacs are coming. <laughs> I'm actually chatting it's out here with people day. in... in, in uh, it's, it's lovely. We've got a huge crowd of people out here today. We've got almost 500 people out here. And they are from all over the place and very excited about painting, whether it be a bird house or a fairy house or an owl house or a, you know, squirrel home or, you know... 
And for those that were concerned that the birdhouse is too close to the flowers, it's because the flowers are in a flower uh, hanging basket. Oh, there you go. They're up high. Mm. That's how you always, like, somebody comes by and says something about your painting. Just be like, no, it's a feature. It, but you right. can't see the whole basket. And then people are like, oh. <laughs> but <laughs> I thought that was so funny. <laughs> it's, it's your world. <laughs> it's your world. <laughs> so the first thing I like to do is rough in, and I highly encourage this. This is chalk that um, you use on a chalkboard, and I sharpen it. This is one of my favorite pencil sharpeners. Um, I sharpen it in one of these little universals so I get a point. Yep. And what I would recommend is you rough in your birdhouse. I don't have a particularly overwhelmingly steady hand. So I just want to see the shape and size of what I'm doing. So this isn't a great square yet because, again, I don't naturally square things. And so you just want to say, okay, how big do I want it? See how I can erase that? And say, no, I want it to be a little bit smaller. Now, there we go, right? Now, just for, you know... Making it like that. Neither, then, huh? neither bird houses or fairy houses need to be square. No. I'm going to show you how to square it, but it doesn't need to be. <laughs> they, can, they can be as off-kilter as you'd like. They can be as off-kilter as they like. They can be as mathematical as you like. That's right. Now, actually, I didn't do too bad. <laughs> I'm sort of surprised. I, I use my T-square sometimes to just be like, oh, squaring it up. And, and what I would say is, is that if your birdhouse isn't square and feels very rustic, then it will convey as just charming. So be brave. But once I have my square, I can do a really cool thing. I'll use my other ruler because that little handle there, that little hammerhead on that. I'm going to make an X right in the middle of my square. This works on windows, buildings, everything in perspective. Mm-hmm. If you do this, it'll help you put your roof lines in. No, this is true when you're building large things like wall segments or. Oh, do you guys do this too? Bed. Yeah, you just. Okay, not you know, just an art thing. It's a, it's a, it's a I, math thing. I felt like a special. <laughs> not. But because of this, you see this right here. My, my point of my roof will be here. Yeah. Directly above that, and that's how you can make any style of little fairy house. Right. Any style of little birdhouse, any cute structure, any little cottage. If you remember, that's how you get the point of where your roof would be. So you don't have to do the math of dividing your square in half, which can be just problematic. I don't know about you, but it's just a challenge for me. Now, there's a very and there, I have a little birdhouse in. What do you guys think? Yeah, this is really interesting. Hmm. I, this is something I've, I've noticed about uh, house houses and 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 architecture mm -hmm. is the further north you go the taller the peak of the house is so the snow falls off right yeah and then the further south you go the less they care about that until they get to a place where it's flat because it never rains <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like no no it's just another place to walk <laughs> <laughs> now i have here um a little diamond head palette knife you don't have to use this you can do this with your brush i just like to mix up some in a nice bigger batch makes it easier for me and pull a little bit out and I'm gonna mix my birdhouse color it's just white and thalo blue I don't I if it's too light if you mix your birdhouse too light it won't show up against this fence oh you'd want to do a light birdhouse against a dark fence Mm. And a darker birdhouse against a light fence. And then we've got colors and all kinds of fun things to play with. But can you see I just got a nice little batch there? Yeah. Now, I realized that uh, our north-south is only relative to your hemisphere. Because if you're in the oh, southern yeah. hemisphere, the, the, <laughs> oh. the more southern you get, the, t the more snow you'd have. I'm going to use a number 10, uh, bright. Um, what you want here is just a brush with a nice firm film, uh, firmness that's or acrylic paint that's square. This particular one is called Goldilocks, and I really love her. If you've been here for a while, you know why. <laughs> she's uh, She's been bionic lately. <laughs> but it's just wonderful to have tools that you can uh, trust, and the best brush is the one that you use. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With acrylic painting, though, you really, uh, if you have heavy body paints, you don't want the brushes to be too soft. If you have craft paints, it's not so bad. 
I'm just going to very carefully using, see how the shape of my brush helps me get this edge, like I can use this nice edge of my brush and get this beautiful square? Yeah. The brush helps me. The other way I would have to do this is tape, just like you would a window or something, the outline shape of my house to get my edge. And if I didn't have a brush, it would do that. Well, that would be another way I could get those nice edges. Cool. And then I would say, go get a good brush. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you good edge because that's really helpful. You may have to paint a couple of coats of your blue because I'm painting professional paint. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of beautiful, rich pigment. And it covers really easily for me and flows out. So if your experience is different, don't panic. It just may be the product. Right. And and uh, so you may have to do a couple layers of paint, and now you, um, uh, just to get the to get some you know some good coverage, and that's mm -hmm. okay. Uh, it's it's good to dry between those, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, you must allow to completely dry. And actually, what I would tell you is, the less expensive your paint is, the more you have to be present to that because sometimes it does not bind well. Uh, right now, paint companies get the cost down in a couple of ways that make some of your experience harder. That's not always true because you wouldn't necessarily see that in all craft paints, right? Yeah. Because they're designed to differently. But if you got, uh, you know, some, like, kit of tube paints from an unknown source, <laughs> like Wish, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So many feelings on that in art supplies right now. Oh, that's really cool. The hmm. uh, just just the uh, reading here. There's lots of different questions going on here. Oh, I'm I'm in a good place. I can answer a question. Okay. Just so, paint this little square in. Now, like if if the uh, if you're having trouble with uh, with lighter colors uh, over there, you can, you can, you can paint down white instead. Yes. If you're, okay. if you went with the yellow birdhouse, if you're like, I love you, but the yellow birdhouse spoke to me, mm -hmm. paint that white first. Even with my paint, I'm painting golden. I paint Holbein. I paint Matisse. I paint really amazing paint. Yeah. But even with that on yellows, everybody's paint line everywhere. They're transparent. You're going to need to put a white down. Yep. They also would like to say that you have very pretty jewelry on today. So thank you so much. They like your they like your necklace and your and your and your ring. Just as part of the you know while you're painting in your tree your your little your little birdhouse there. I'll let you know. Makes me so happy in my heart. Yeah. <sighs> the only thing better is if there were cupcakes to the side here for me to nosh on. Oh yes, cupcakes would be nice. They would be so nice. All right now. I can do a couple things here. I could dry this and continue painting the birdhouse, or I can lay in a little bit of my grass while I'm waiting for it to dry. So I'm gonna lay in a little bit of my grass while I'm waiting for it to dry, and to do that, I'm gonna get, let me look, look, look. I think I'm gonna get my, oh, you know what I forgot to put out was my phthalo green. Did you? See, that's why you always check the description below with me. <laughs> I used to put my whole paint palette out at the beginning. I'm trying to think how we're gonna do it in future over 2018. But the problem is, like, by the time I might get to the Cad Red, it's all dry, and that stuff is expensive. Not my kind, because it's it's a real cadmium pigment. You kind of should be inexpensive, because you'll be using Hue. All right, so I am just loading up my brush. Now, this is my number four cat's tongue. You could use a round brush for what I'm about to show you and get a really good result. You could use a filbert. It would be okay. And you can use a bright or an angle. Because this is really more about how you lay the brush stroke down. Now I'm taking a little of my yellow and just a little bit of my green. Can you see how it's not mixed on my brush? It's going to mix on my canvas. And I have a lip on my canvas, so I'm going to turn this over for my ease because this gets in my way. What I'll tell you is about this stroke is that you press the hardest at the beginning. And then as the stroke pulls out, you lighten it. And I like oh. to curve my stroke. Can you guys see the curve of that? Yeah, I just zoomed in on that. So it's, there's a little bit of curve. Now you're upside down here. I am upside down because if you have this little safety edge, and it's not really for safety, it's a holding edge for your canvases, it makes it hard to paint this bottom part. 
Gotcha. So you have to rotate around. See how I curve that? Yeah. Now I'm going to go just this little bit, and I'm going to show you a little trick, because you guys are always like, grass, it makes me so mad. Karen's, Karen's like, well, now that you have made suggestions, I too need cupcakes. Cupcakes are so nice. This, I, think, I think that everyone just unanimously went, hmm, yes, cupcakes. That's what we need. Now, I like to, in my grass, I like to change the direction of the flow of the blades. And these aren't grass. This is the leaves of my flowers. Why do, you, why do you do that? Because that's what it does in nature. It doesn't get up in a line and behave. It does its own thing. It, it makes little clumps. Other thing, you notice how this is long and this is short, and these yeah. are all different lengths? That really helps your grass. If you make little lines like this, well, that's not going to work very well. Yeah. To feel like grass. Right, yeah. It might be good something else, so don't forget that brush stroke. <laughs> Sometimes you guys are so cute because you'll be like, oh, I did this so wrong. And I'm like, but don't forget it because you're going to need it later for something else. Right. It's good over here. There's really nothing we discard in art. Right? Everything we kind of keep for later. Even if it doesn't work on a particular project, I always keep that in my brain bank for later. Right. Like, oh, that was, didn't work there, but gosh, that might be somewhere nice, something else. I like to change up the mixture of yellow to green. Dun, dun, dun. So as I come here and these blades have joined, I wouldn't keep having blades, so I'll just fill this in. See? Yeah. And I'm just going to do that all the way across the bottom like that. Yeah, and this, this really kind of goes in pretty quick. Yeah. Just have fun with it. And, make, you know, uh, probably after the, the grass, you don't really have too much left, do you? Um, we have a little decorative work on the house, the red roof. Oh, yeah. Some flowers, which I'm going to show you some cool stuff about. And then I expect to see so many flower paintings with wood. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see all the variations of the little, the, the, the little fairy birdhouse. I am excited. And I've got another spring wreath coming up for you guys because I feel bad that we didn't get to do our blue wreath. Mm. So expect a couple wreaths with sponges. Is that oh, y'all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I always pay my debts like a Targaryen. Not like a <laughs> Lannister, sorry. <laughs> not like a Targaryen. That is not what my channel does. <laughs> they just show up with, like, <laughs> dragons. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that can happen, too, if it's, you mess with me enough. <laughs> I guess that's true. We do sometimes show up with dragons. <laughs> <laughs> so, you just painting the little I've been one to write an angry though. worded letter from time to time. <laughs> I you do I have to be any of the houses from there? Can can I option to be like? Weren't there some Bohemians that were set up out in the woods? Painting? I yeah, man. I feel like being as far away from that whole group of people as possible seems like a good idea. No. I have actually been watching the map to see where I would live because I, I I'm you know I'm like remember Rose and yeah. Bernard? Yeah, I was gonna say just say that. Rose and Bernard. Who knows? Yeah, so we'll, we'll see who who knows who Rose and Bernard were, but they they were they were I our cinnamon and mine um, favorite couple on TV because they just said they uh, said the right stuff. They, they did said, exactly what John and I would. Yeah, done. they did exactly what we would do. <laughs> <laughs> we <were> like, nope. <laughs> so. Ooh, we're so funny. So All this right. is live. Oh, someone guessed it. Oh, good. Sean guessed it. My my eldest daughter is going through a marathon. I don't know how to break it to her. <laughs> yep. It was it was lost for everyone else. And and uh they were two characters that uh got brought to this awesome paradise island in the middle of nowhere where you know they were and everyone was like, you know, running around going, "Oh my gosh, what are we here? Why are we here?" And they were like, "Um, we're just going to go hang out on the beach and have a good time. We'll catch you guys later." And you didn't get to find this out until like the very and spoiler alert, I just went shopping Lost. in my brush store. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see me do that? I just went shopping in my brush store. <laughs> just, no, I didn't actually. <laughs> Wait, is that what you were doing? Oh, yeah, that's what I was doing. I was like, I really need a six. And I'm like, I want to get a six right here. Okay. So the reason I'm picking this brush is the width of it and the square of it is going to really help me lay in this roof easy. And I just don't feel like working for it right now. 
So that's why I picked this, and that's what you're looking for, is something that's going to give you the width and shape of the roof that you want without too much repainting effort. But, you know, you can just paint it in with anything. We're just talking about painting two equal size strips on either side. I'm going to come here and yep. just pull this along. If it runs out of paint, I can always come to the edge of my brush and clean that edge. And then pull again. At the top, I'm not going to finish. Because that I will hand work. And you can see I can come back and improve my coverage where I need to. But it gives me a nice little roof that I'm not, like, struggling for. There is absolutely no need to struggle for things in art. Um, some things are more of a struggle, but if you've got an easy way to accomplish a task and it's effective, go for it. Mm -hmm. All right, we're pulling it up. I'm just making sure this is nice and bright and red. And then here I'm just going to very carefully, using my tool, create a nice point. Yeah. There we go. See? Does not need to be perfect. We're just building a cute little house for cute little birds. Or squirrels, because, you know, frisbee. Hmm. Ooh, there were, uh, there was uh, we 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 talked about dragons and the, and uh who's, let me go back and see who it was was it Jacob I think Jacob was like uh more dragons please we could use a new dragon tutorial uh, are you guys okay with a unicorn unicorn we all yo, yo, sorry we're gonna get unicorns too <laughs> up. but yeah I could bring in some more dragons in you bring always do dragons you, in. you were talking about them just the other day too mm hmm. I just got some, some unicorn stuff happening right now. I may not make the tutorial. I'll put it up. You guys let me know. <laughs> but I got to have something to do tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, help. All right. So I've oh, sharpened my chalk again. What you were doing. I was wondering what that sound was. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. So I've sharpened my chalk again. And this is just going to help me block in some things. I like to use this because it's so easy to take off my canvas. You want the kind you use on chalkboards. If you get the kind that's called oil pastel, that's no good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Don't there, do that. <laughs> there's a unicorn clatter happening. Oh, good. That's, just, that's going on. Like what do you call a herd of unicorns? What, I didn't know do a whole herd, but I did this beautiful lone Wimson sort of unicorn under this extraordinary pink tree with purple grass. I don't know what's going yeah. on with me. They've got to be called like a love of unicorns or something. <gasps> oh, yeah. my gosh. Because you know, they've got to have some kind of special name like that, I'm sure. So I'm going to pick a little size of my home. I'm just going to come here and make a little circle. Now, you can do a little round door, you know, this kind. You could do a heart. Hearts are real popular. But I like the flower. That's a po I like that as an opening for me, so I'm going to do that. And then up here, I'm going to give myself just a little idea of where I'm going to be putting my garland. And so I, you know, say I'm going to have my rose focus here. Then I'm going to have a vine that comes arcs down and S is back. This is like an S. I can do an S. And oh, by the way, it doesn't even have to be a perfect S. It just needs to be a general S. So just SOA. <laughs> SOS. <laughs> and then I know I want a couple garlands down here. So I say, okay, I'm going to have a little rose here in the corner. I'm going to have a little rose here in the corner. And then I'm going to bring this vine on this curve. I leave room for them to each have buds. And you may need to make sure that you give room for buds and things like that in the leaves on the way that we finish it. But remember, you can erase your chalk really easily with like a damp brush once the paint is dry, so don't stress. Now, if you chalk into wet paint, chalk and that wet paint belong to each other. So I'm already seeing a little boob, like, uh-oh. Um, to have the room for the garlands down here, I'm going to need to move. Watch this. I'm going to use my clean water thing. Because <laughs> I say no. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move this up a bit. Move, okay. Because that's I the good want thing about room the chalk. for my bloom. Let's leave room for your bloom. Say it with me. I'm going to leave room for my bloom. In your life, leave room for your bloom. And in your painting, leave room for your bloom. So can you see how like sketching with chalk really lets you arrange placement so things don't get away from you once you start adding paint? Mm-hmm. It's a very good thing to do. Oh. What? 
I, I, oh, just nothing. I just I'm I'm being entertained by chat too. Oh. So sometimes I go ooh because I get I, get, I read something in chat that's very interesting. <laughs> so I'm gonna sip my coffee too. <laughs> so what I just learned is remember how I was like you know what do you call a group of unicorns and I was like do you call it like a love of unicorns? Mm -hmm. So uh, Storm says it's a blessing of unicorns. Okay, now I feel like I have to do a whole herd of unicorns. Oh yes, so they're we all can about have it. Have a blessing in our art community. We do. We that have just a blessing feels of Sherpa necessary, corns. doesn't it? Yeah. Oh dear. We have a blessing of Sherpa corns. We have blessing of Sherpa corns. Oh, but actually, remember, if you have a group of Sherpettes together, they're a pallet. Oh, that's right. It's a pallet of Sherpettes. <laughs> it's a pallet of Sherpettes. Okay, so this is a number eight cat's tongue from mm -hmm. my line. But look, you can use a big number eight round here as well. You just want a brush that gives you a point so you can put in the basis of your flower and have a nice easy time with your petals. And to do that, what I do is I come above my little circle where I know I'm gonna have my opening and just pull down, okay, into it. And then I'm gonna come just to the right and I'm gonna do the same and pull down. I might thicken these petals up later, I might not. It's really just up to my mood, up to my mood. Here's a little tip though. There's going to become a point where it's hard to make the stroke. Remember to turn the painting, not yourself. So see right here? Turn the painting, not yourself. That is a thing. Holding your breath, not turning the painting. Those are things that can mess you up in a really weird way that you might not be aware is going on. Cause uh, stress and back pain and all kinds of things. This is, so it's okay just to flip it all over to do this. What do you mean? Just flip your canvas. Yeah. Yeah, you should. If you're having trouble getting to an angle, flip your canvas. Once you're happy with the petals, then you can adjust any shape. I kind of went almost with more, I felt like it was like a much wider like dahlia, but you know. Here we go. And again, I'm rotating. I'm not making myself crazy. <laughs> I used to, by the way. That was something that um, a good art instructor said to me. I was like, move the, um, the, the art, not you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> but I was young then, so I could like contort my whole space and not pay for it too big. Well, hey, hey. That was the same person who was like, turn the lights on and don't draw in the dark. There was, there was a period of time where you did look like performance art for you. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, you get a big canvas in there and you just wouldn't even think about relocating the canvas for perspective or comfort or any of it. You just move yourself all around. All right. See, so I have a nice little flower here in the center. Yeah. That's super cheerful. I'm going to rinse that out. Now, while this is drying, I'm going to get a detail brush. This is, I'll take it over here. This is a number two filbert, short handle. The nice thing about short handled brushes is if you're sitting at a table, these can be easier to use when the handles are short because you have space, if that makes sense. So what you want is a small, nice brush that's gonna let you have control over this space. I'm gonna dip my brush in water and pull out a little purple. This is my dog's purple and I'm gonna add a little cad to it. This is gonna warm up my purple into the red. I'm gonna come here and I'm going to Oh sorry about that. Zoom in Start up circling my brush strokes. This okay. is my nice cabbage rose. It's in the center. And and even though this is pretty solid, those brush strokes matter. Oh yeah. And that's why you make them kind of in that roundy swirliness, right? That's why I make them in that roundy swirliness. 
So uh, I'm going to say out here, because we've got a huge community that's joined us. We've got over 500 people that joined us. Hi, guys. I, how are you doing today? And out there, I just want I want you guys to know that seeing you here, Emily, today with me has brightened my day. And I know what it's like to be stuck in a hospital. So thank you for sharing the time with us. And I'm really glad that you're here with us because it's it's more fun when we have more of our of our community here painting along and chatting with me in here in chat. It, it, so. and, I, and I can't tell you how much John does not enjoy his time in a hospital. That's zero. I don't think, uh, if, if I don't know anyone, who, if, maybe if you're a doctor, if it's a place no, you work. No, just, even of all the people that don't enjoy, John is just like, <laughs> get this stuff off me. No, I'm like, gotta I'm, go. I'm, I'm like a noping out of it just person. But There's no while, I gotta go. <laughs> wait, wait. wait. <laughs> So we're with you. So <laughs> love having you guys here with us today. Thank you so much because it's really is. We got over just like this huge group of people. We have a palette of sherpettes today. A palette of sherpettes. We me? certainly do. When I'm loading this brush, you can see me pulling it out. One of the things that you may not be catching, our new cameras will catch it, but I'm pulling it out and then sometimes I roll up my fingers and flip it. This is how I'm getting the paint really loaded in. I'm going to get a little yellow. And I'm like, I'm just going to make a little line, sort of fall my chalk line. Remember, you can erase this pretty easily, so don't be too stressed about it. Now, I see this you're getting some chalk. You're picking up chalk on your brush. Yeah, that'll happen. It's This stuff has no pigment in it, especially the cheaper the kids' chalk, the less pigment they give you, so it just doesn't even lighten your paint. Okay, so it's okay. It's totally okay. And it won't change the color or mess it up? No, not well, at all. that's good to know, because it's like... I was like, I would have panicked completely myself, gone. <laughs> so I pull a couple little leaves there, and I'm going to do that all the way up. Make, maybe come here and add a couple little leaves, and then down here, and I'm just adding a couple little leaves here and there. Doesn't even really matter. You just want to do it. Make sure you got some leaves for your stuff. Do this side. A couple little leaves. See, it's just a backwards curve stroke in, right? So I'm here, I am plant my stroke, and then I, you know, plant it pretty hard here and then lighten as I come in. One, two, curve, curve. Pretty easy little stroke to get in there. And then it can be fun to give this guy a few little petals. See? That's all it takes. How fun is that? Yeah. I don't know. Fun for me. Hopefully I like fun them. for you. I think you look really cool. <laughs> I like what I'm doing today. Hopefully you get to too. Uh-oh. You're down lower there now. Go down here. All right. So I'm going to come in and do kind of a similar thing down here. And I hope all of you are going, oh my gosh, I can use this everywhere. Yeah. I think those little paper boxes you can buy at the craft stores that you want to decoratively paint. Hey, guys. This will go right on it. Suddenly your storage got beautiful, <laughs> amazing. Everyone's like, where'd you get it? And you're like, oh, you have to make it. <laughs> 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 it's my original design, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little petals here and kind of curve those as well. These are sort of curving this inward way. Just around those edges. Maybe I'll come down here and add a couple little out curves. This little friend can have one. I like to have everything on my canvas be friends. Mm -hmm. And relate in a harmonious way. Not that that's been my life lately. <laughs> but I like the idea of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goal, right? Yep. It's a goal. There we go. Just painting those. There we go. Just making little leaves. And you're just making room for lots of little buds and flowers and colors to come. You just wash that out really well if you're going to use the same brush because you don't want any of the yellow to get in your next colors. I want that all out so the next colors are very bright and clean. I'm going to go back into my purple and my red just to make sure I've got some buds coming. I'm going to add a bunch of little buds. 
just here and there, wherever you think they'll fit, all right? Wherever you think those little buds will go. And the two tone of the color is going to help you. You can do this as one stroke, but I like the two tone. A little extra step, but I mean, we've got the time, right? Not in such a big rush that we can't do two of the strokes. <laughs> Maybe three. Huh. Yeah. We have all kinds of room for making many strokes. The thing is just to make these little dashes. See how these dashes are? So you could have a, a Lilu Dallas multi-stroke. A Lilu Dallas multi-stroke. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth here. I like Valerian too. <laughs> you know, it was pretty. I, I liked it too. It was really good. There was there was some it even count. there was some horizontally challenged moments for me, <laughs> like vertical. Like it was, it was a very pretty movie. No spoilers, but I liked it. John didn't. That's our review. <laughs> <laughs> you come here for the painting education, but you get unintentional TV and movie reviews. You get pop culture review and spoilers. <laughs> spoilers, because we get overexcited. If you haven't done all of Game of Thrones, please don't watch our Daenerys tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> It'll totally be a bummer. Miss Jess is still talking about cupcakes too. She's like, oh, cupcakes. Mm, yep, cupcakes. Nope. We got to do that. I'm like, yeah, I'm with her. I'm still on cupcakes. All right. So I'm just loading my brush all up with my pure CAD and I'm going to come back to this rose. And then I'm going to make a little C, a little bit of a C. And then it's going to have a little partner. It's going to curve around. Is it C for cupcake? Try to think of bricks coming out. My friend Angela said that once and I thought that was a really good way to say it. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to come here and make a little oh, C. Oh, oh, I got down there. Right. I'm just doing these little roses. You want to see the dark purple underneath because that's what gives you the structure and shape of the rose. Mm. It's the shadow. Roses are all about the shadows and the highlights and the layers and the layers. Now I'm going to add a little red highlight to all my little petals. Because they're buds. And this make this cheerful. By the way, we're nearly done. I know. That's so much fun. This. It is. It just goes so quickly. It does. I'm so excited about the lilac wreath. All right. There we go. Boom, boom. Here we go. Just adding little touches of this bright, pure cadmium red. And those are just little highlights add that layering of, of pop. Yeah. And it, a little pop. See, it doesn't pop it. And it really doesn't take much. It just It's an emotional pop. It is. And again, think about your cabinets, your boxes, your gifts this year. Now, all I've got to do is make a little opening in this spectacular little house for my birdie to go into. Make that any size. Maybe these are finch bird houses up above. It could be the a brownie flower house. planter. It's way up the fence where no cats can go. Brownies could live in there. I do read all your comments. I can't Fairies. always answer, but I'm reading. <laughs> 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 Everyone's like, but the birds will die. I'm like, no, no. It's a planter. Yeah. So you just you can't see all of it. It's just below where your eye line is. Right. We're focusing in on what was important to us. And so mm -hmm. therefore you don't see the planter. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to uh, pull a lot of black onto my brush and again you can see me go pull 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 flip pull 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 see how that's loading it into my brush I've dipped in a little water to improve the flow of my heavy body paint if you've got craft paint don't do that you're good that's designed to just paint with no water so I'm just pulling this out and I'm going to just make my circle until I'm happy with my circle you may need to do a couple coats. You may only need one. Just depends on what you're painting with. Oh my goodness. All right. See, so there we go. When you're happy, when you're happy and you know it, Stomp your feet. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so when that's good and you feel like, oh, I really like how that looks, you can start doing your flowers. Um, you've got the example if you want all lilacs, but let me show you a couple different kind of flowers that you can do. And I'll make like a multi-garden here and then you can decide how you want to uh, do this. Hmm. So the first thing is take your little brush, your round brush. This is a number four round. There's a really nice point to it. Um, you want your point and detail brushes to have good edges, good points, and good spring. And give yourself a couple stalks that you're going to be painting on. I like to take them at different heights. See? And you want these lines to be really fine. If you're unsure of this paint, you know, you can do this with chalk and then add a stem later. So don't feel trapped. Mm. And you can see I'm sort of doing the same thing. See how I'm making little, they're different angles and different heights. They need to be that. I'm going to do a nice tall one right here. A lot of this is covered, so it's okay that you're just hinting at the stem. Let's say, how many kinds of flowers can we have? I might even grab another little bunch yeah. of these Q-tips. So I've got these Q-tips. These are the makeup kind. So they're not Q-tips. They are cotton swabs. They're cotton swabs. And what you want is not the generic, because the generics tend to fluff. You know, you push, 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 so I can see yeah. it. There you go. There they you tend go. to fluff in the heavy body paint. So... You, you want to get high-quality cotton swabs. The kind you use for makeup are the really good ear kind. And if it's really, you just can't, you put it in your mouth and twirl it to tighten the cotton and allow it to dry with your spit. Yeah. That's called mouth sizing. Yeah. We have a... It is not okay to do with paint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's think of a couple kinds of flowers we can do. So, of course, the first kind of flower that we can do is our little lavender bud. So, I've got three of these together, and I go tap, tap, tap. And I get a little white in there. Because my lavender is purple, a couple different tones of purple. So at the bottom, this little guy might be whiter. I'm just tapping around, making a beautiful little, little shape. As I'm going to come up to the top, I'm not going to take it all the way to the tip, because I'm going to do that with an individual Q-tip. If you feel like, oh, I'd like it to have some more dimensionality to it, you can add a little white. See if I can get a little better framing on that. Right. I'm going to even put out a thing that you can do is put out a little fluid white. Because as you see, the heavy body wants to pull the cotton fibers, but the craft paints or fluid paints don't. So you can see how easier that is to, to work there. I'm going to take this here. Now I'm going to also, while I'm at this, make some little in the grass bits of this, knowing that I'm going to be finishing it with an individual. Q-tip, right? Yeah. Get some white if you need to finish it out. You know, give a little highlights, a little dimensionality. And then you're going to take your singles. Well, this guy right here. Get a little purple, a little white. And be see and make a nice little tip. All right. So that's this one, and we'll finish these out in a second. I'm going to show you another kind. Let's come over here and let me explain why blue bonnets would be super different. Okay. So my blue bonnet is going to be a little bit of blue at first. Make sure it's not too much hair there. I'm going to come on the bottom. And then just take this right on up. But I'm going to come into my white. Right about here, I'm going to start to add this to my little blue bonnet, my little lupine. And I'm going to grab a little individual. I hope all the blue bonnet people just win. Ooh. Oh, I, I do. I love <laughs> this. This is, and you know, this is how and you can put multiple flowers in your flower box. You can, and they... And they can be different kinds of flowers. It could be that who planted this beautiful little flower box likes all kinds of these little flowers and, and mix them up and 
Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So, like, if, if you were a fairy and you were planting stuff outside of your house, what would you plant? You would Like, have... a whole bunch of different yeah. di- different stuff, wouldn't you? You would. You would be so creative. I would. And my little white dauber. There we go. I would definitely have passion flowers because those things look like they're from this, from the moon. Yeah. I love passion flowers. They're like moon flowers. Which is also pretty. Which is pretty. I love them. So, you can just see how you can, uh, you know, really easily... You know, definitely make some that are low, though, right? Mm-hmm. And smaller because plants don't behave. Okay, so this is a little small one here. You can even come in and just put a little color in if you need it. I'm going to put one more little blue bonnet in there. Maybe like right here. Coming here. And it's very fun to get the fluid paint or the white paint and, you know, lighten this up. Ooh. Hmm. Brisby needs a treehouse like this. Brisby does. That's, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh. So I've got a nice little cluster of blue bonnets now, but what if I was a real fan of those fire spikes? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. So this one, I would come in here with my red. And say right next to these guys, I might go like this. Oh, yeah. But about halfway here, I'm going to get my yellow. Oh, wow. And you're just going to blend it right there on the canvas. Mm-hmm. Right there on the canvas, little fire spike. And this look, I could be more orange. Coming right here. See, I made one right there. Mm-hmm. Get some just yellow. And really lighten that up. And then when I get my individual, I just go right into my yellow. Even go right over my birdhouse if I need to. And like, are we getting some ideas of all the flowers we uh-huh. can make this spring? This is this is really exciting. Lots of people are like talking about all the different like different variations of flowers one could put in front of this, and how yeah, these are these are really you know, like I, 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 everyone is just really enjoying how yeah this is a very candy like uh, you know the colors on this really yes. are are really popping with the cads in it. Well, and that is a power trick right there. Yeah. When you uh, use a lot of cadmium, it really helps you get a vibrant result because r- the reason artists still bother with real cadmium pigment, the reason paint companies deal with the danger of making it, is it's just luminous. Yeah. Not that there are not other amazing options, like there is peril red. Oh, yeah. Right? There is uh, that new signal orange that uh, that Golden did. That's incredible, and that's certainly competitive to Academy. And there's some great hues, and so that's a wonderful way to save money. Mm. But the reason Kincaid and and Bob used them is they so cool. So see now I've got a nice little a little collection of little fire spikes that are happening here, and yeah. I can go back and finish out my I can find my cute uh, my lavenders. <laughs> Just happy little lavenders. I'm planting right here. Just putting my little purple in. I'm just going to make sure that it gets a little smaller as it goes up so I can taper those tips. This one's going to be a lot lighter. A little, little bit down there. It's just fun to add little tiny flowers of this. And then I, I remember I'm going to finish them out with my individual. So now we've gone from this very traditional, like just I've got some lavender, to I can really just make a lot of things. Be careful here. Anywhere that you're purple and your reds and yellows like this, where the yellow, see this, this red has a lot of yellow in it, and this yellow has a lot of yellow in it. These are contrasting colors, so you can lose some of that vibrancy. So try not to overmix those. Not like, be careful, it's going to (laughs) explode. Or anything scary. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's just a general art awareness. I realize I said that super emphatically, like, be cautious. When really it's like, just don't mix the paint. And you can just, you know, find all your little balances. All right. There we go. Doesn't this become fun real fast? I'm going to get my individual little fellow. My little dude. I mean, you could do this very carefully, all with one Q-tip. You had some very uh, extreme precision painting you wanted. With one Q-tip, I could do any pointless painting. We'd just be there a really, really long time. <laughs> there we go. That one can layer in front of his friend. So... Now we're down to the sign it stage of the game. I'm going to get my detail brush back out wherever I put it, if I can find it. My little, little, de there it is. So when you're happy with your painting and you feel like you've grown all the flowers that you want to grow, you've added ladybugs or butterflies or anything that you think might make you happy with bees, I don't know, the spring things that make you feel joy, I like to grab my little detail brush. I'll get a little white paint. I think I'll get a little yellow paint. I'm going to make a nice little signature. I'm going to try to hide it in the grass. I like to hide my signature. And the reason is, is that everything that you put on your painting is part of your canvas. Part of your composition. So if you sign it, sign it in a thoughtful way. That's all. I'm not even saying what that is. I'm just saying thoughtfully. Yeah. Ooh, doo -doo. See, I'm getting my little chalk off. Oh, yeah. Just erasing chalk, chalk, all chalk, that chalk, up, chalk, huh? chalk, 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 No more chalk. See, everything's dry here, so it's so easy to rest. Erase. Arrest. I'm not arresting the chalk. <laughs> chalk, you are under arrest. I'm just taking off my little guidelines so nobody knows how I got my composition in. Voila. This is ready to take out in indirect light without strong shadows to photograph and post on social media. Mm. <laughs> hashtag Art <Sherpa. laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, yes, that's our hashtag. Yeah. But I'm I mean, not saying don't do that. I, hope, I, I like this even better. Wow, this turned out so nice. See, I can put the picture, picture. Here's the picture I picture. feel like I may have to change the thumbnail because I don't know, it's man. It's so nice. It's so nice. <laughs> be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. We're going to do something tomorrow in the afternoon. At our usual time, I just got to get that listing up. I want to see you guys at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.